A long, long time ago, I met a witch. Oh, yes. And it wasn't one of those good witch enchantress kind of a witch. No, 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 no. This is not the kind of witch she was. Her name was Dorchen Wild. And she told me the most incredible story. She told me about another witch, a friend of hers, perhaps, an acquaintance, someone from her village. In any case, the actual story is not about the witch, really. It's about the brother and sister, poor, unfortunate souls. They lost their mother very early in life. And then, not that long after, their father. It was a sad, sad day when their father died and they were left alone with their stepmother. Now there was a real witch. She not only delighted in making the young boy and girl's life a living hell. She fed them barely anything. She tried to make them miserable at every turn. Even the little dog under the table had a better life and better care than those poor, poor children. And one day, the boy, who was just a little bit or older than the young girl, said, Sister, we must leave. We will never taste happiness if we stay here with her. So quietly in the middle of the night, they stole away by the moonlight. They walked quite a while, and when they were far enough from the house, they laid down under a tree and had a nice sleep in peace of the forest. Now, their stepmother was a witch, and she was an evil one. As soon as she woke up and realized the children were gone, she bewitched all of the streams in the vicinity, so that every time they, took a, they wanted to take a drink, dangers awaited. When they woke up in the morning, the brother was thirsty and he wanted to drink from a nearby stream. But this, as they approached, the sister listened to the sound of the stream and realized that the stream was telling her something. The stream said, anyone who drinks from me will be turned into a wolf. <gasps> that frightened the young girl very much. She begged her brother not to drink from this stream. Oh, brother, if you drink from this stream, you will become a wolf, a wolf, and you will eat me for sure. He listened. They went farther, and they walked quite a while longer. But the brother still experienced deep thirst. And as they approached the next stream, the girl listened to the stream. And this dream said that if he drinks from it, he'll turn into a tiger. Oh, brother, brother, this dream, it says you'll turn into a tiger if you drink from it. Oh, please, I beg you, please do not, do not drink from it. And yet again, he agreed. And they went up to the third stream. And here again, the little girl listened and she heard the stream say, if you drink from me, you will become a deer. Oh, brother, do not drink from this stream, she said. You will become a deer and run away from me. But the brother's thirst was so strong that he fell onto his knees and drank directly from the stream. And instantly he turned into a deer. But he didn't run away. No, he stayed. 
and they held each other, and the girl wept over his fate with big, loving tears. When she finally stopped, she took her belt off her, off her dress, attached it to the deer, and led him through the woods. It was only a little while farther that they saw an empty house. Oh, what a beautiful this experience this would be if, we, if you weren't bewitched. We would live in this house happily ever after. As it was, they moved into this abandoned house, and the girl left the house each day, searching for berries and nuts and fresh grass and herbs for the deer. She took care of them very well, and all day they played in the woods and gathered food and enjoyed themselves immensely, free from the horrible experience from the witch's house experiences from the witch's house. And so time passed, a long time. And then one day, the whole forest sounded with hunting horns. Oh, it was the king ready for a hunt. Oh, the deer, he, he couldn't sit still. He, the, every time the horn sounded, he felt like he would just jump out of his skin. Oh, begged his sister, please don't go into the forest today. The forest is teeming with hunters. You're bound to get killed. Oh, but when I hear the hunting horn, said the brother, I cannot help it. I must run. I must run through the forest. I have this desire. I cannot stop myself. I will be fine. I'm the fastest deer. I will be okay. Just let me out. Oh, okay, said the sister. If you must, but... Please, let's say a password so that when you come back in, I would know that it is you. So the brother said, when I come back in, I will say, little sister, little sister, let me in. It is me. And then you will know that that's me. Oh, okay, said the little sister. And the brother ran out like the wind. All day she waited. And all day the hunt went on, and the horns were sounded this way and that way. Oh, how she worried. But at the end of the day, the beautiful little deer came back to her, knocked on the door, and said, Little sister, little sister, it is me. Let me in. And so she opened the door and let him in. Little did she know that one of the hunters was just nearby and almost tracked him back to his to their house the next day the f horns of the battle of the f hunt sounded again and oh the deer started getting restless again oh i must go i must go again and so he went but this time the king got a little bit closer. And this time one of the hunters wounded him ever so slightly on the foot. And so he was a little bit slower this time. And the same tracker that tracked him the day before tracked him all the way to the house. He lay hidden in the woods as the little deer approached the door and knocked on it and said, little sister, little sister, let me in. It is me. When the hunter came back to the palace, he told the king everything he saw and heard. And the king thought, hmm, this is a curious thing indeed. I will have to investigate it. And so the next day, he instructed his hunters to chase the deer, but not to harm him, but to chase him well into the evening. And so they did. As the deer left the little hut and the hunt began, the hunters soon spied him and they chased him through the forest, never harming him. Meanwhile, the tracker that found their hut in the previous evenings and the king went to the hut, knocked on the door and said, little sister, little sister, let me in. 
it is me. And then the little sister, thinking it was her brother, opened the door. Was she ever surprised that it was the king? She had never seen such a personage with a golden crown. And he, as soon as he saw her, he was taken aback by her beauty. He fell to one knee and begged her to become her, his wife. The little girl envisioned all of the possibilities and readily agreed to being his wife. But, she said, I, wherever I go, my little dear goes with me. Oh, yes, said the king, and he made sure that the little deer was well taken care of, and he had a velvet pillow in their own bedchamber to sleep on. Well, soon the wedding happened, and it was an amazing affair. Pomp and joy and celebrations lasted for weeks. And one thing led to the next, and the evil witch had heard of her stepdaughter's fortune. And oh, was she unhappy. She had a daughter, ugly as anything, with only one eye. Oh, this was a girl whose lack of beauty matched was was only matched by her personality. She was as sour-faced as she was sour-spirited. And immediately she said, Oh, the king's wife, that should have been me. I should have been the king's wife. I deserve that fate, not that ash girl. So the mother devised a clever plan. She disguised herself as a palace maid. And soon enough, the young queen gave birth to a baby boy. And when she did, and she laid there exhausted, this palace maid, this fake palace maid, came into her chambers and said, oh, queen, I have drawn a bath for you. Come, let, let's, let's soak your weary bones. You will feel better right away. And she half led, half carried the exhausted queen into the bath chamber. And when she was there, she locked the door and turned the fire until it was fiery, fiery hot. And then the young queen suffocated from all the heat in the bath chamber. In the meantime, the evil witch turned her daughter's, daughter's form to represent the queen, to resemble the queen. And it was almost right, but she could not make up the bad eye, the missing eye. So she put her daughter into a beautiful gown and a beautiful headdress sleeping head cap and she told her to lay down with her bad eye into the pillow and when the king came she said oh the queen is too exhausted from childbirth she must not be bothered now she must not see the light she is resting and she said that all day every time the king came to see his wife she said oh it's not time yet not time yet At midnight, the chamber door opened and the true queen walked in, or rather, her ghost, because she was almost translucent. And she walked up to the baby's cradle and she lifted him out of the bed and she held him against her breast, sang to him quietly and suckled him. And then when she was done, she flapped up his pillow, rearranged his blankets, and tucked him back in. And then she didn't forget the little deer either. She went up to his little bed and stroked his head and said, Oh, my loves, twice more I shall, shall come, and then never more. And then 
she sadly disappeared. The nurse was aghast. She didn't know what to think of such an apparition. So she went directly to the king. She waited till the next morning. But she went to the king and said, Oh, king, I saw this, and I think it was a true, real queen. But I don't understand how that could be, because the queen is resting in the bedchamber. Yet she came in from the outside. Together with the king, they went to the guards. They went to all of the pa palace guards. And none of them saw anyone walking through the palace or entering that door. So the next evening, the king stole away in the nurse's chamber and watched. And sure enough, at the stroke of midnight, the door opened and the woman who looked so much like his queen walked in and she was almost translucent. But she walked up to her babies to the baby's cradle and fluffed up his pillows, suckled him. She walked up to the deer and she stroked his head and said, Oh, my loves, once more shall I come and then never more. And then she was gone just like that. Oh, King thought it was curious. So the next night, he waited again. And as she came back and was stroking the deer's head, saying, Oh, this time I shall come and never more. Before she was even able to finish that sentence, she, he jumped up and said, You are my true queen. I recognize you. And he held her hands and he kissed her. And suddenly the air swirled in the chamber and the queen became solid and alive once more. And all oh, were they rejoicing. But then she told the king the true story about how the evil stepmother tried to kill her or did kill her as a matter of fact and her stepdaughter or and her daughter her stepsister they told him everything and he judged that the daughter the one-eyed monster should be driven into the woods where she gets to be eaten by wild beasts and the mother she was tied up to a stake and burned alive and as soon as she breathed her last breath all of her magic unraveled and the young deer once again became a beautiful young boy who lived with the queen and the king happily ever after.